Hello, I'm Anthony. Today we're going to take a look at the concept of system stress. What kinds of things that we do in Cubase have an impact on our CPU and memory resources? Those are the two metrics by which a computer can be made to be most unhappy. We're going to have a look at exactly how those um, numbers work today and some really interesting features about how different processors inside Cubase have an impact on these two numbers. We're going to keep a log of, uh, of what we discover as we go along so we can draw some inferences from it. If you enjoy this video today, check out the Patreon and YouTube channel member links below or some way to help support my channel. Okay, so here are the parameters for the test. I'm going to perform various tests on this system. My first test will always be with a single instance, in other words, single track. Then I'll duplicate that track and then I'll create another 18 instances of them. So we're going to have one track, two tracks and 20 tracks. So here we have a single audio track all on its own. And you can see the CPU um, is cycling around a pretty wide range. So we'll say two to 6% for a single track and our memory, 378 meg. Now I'm gonna duplicate that track. CPU is still operating over a very large range. So I'm not gonna draw any inferences there, but you can see the memory's gone up by about four meg. Call it 382, I'll round up. And now finally, another 18 instances of the same audio track, still the same very low CPU range. So it seems that tracks themselves don't have a particularly heavy CPU burden, but they do all occupy memory. Now that we've got 20 of them, we're up to 470 meg. And so we've added about 100 meg onto the system over the course of 20 tracks, around about five meg each, which is consistent with what we got when we added a single track in. So that's our completely generic baseline test. We've done a really simple process, but there's nothing going on. These tracks are completely empty. They have no processes going on, but we can see this tiny little bit of overhead as far as the memory is concerned. Not particularly exciting yet. Let's start chucking some stuff into these tracks and see what happens when we ask Cubase to start doing some real work. First thing that I'm gonna do is get rid of 19 of these tracks. And this is something that I notice fairly consistently. Cubase must keep stuff buffered because now we're consuming more memory than we did initially. So something in the background is occupying an extra 10 meg. I see this quite a lot. I've had to do lots of total Cubase shutdowns and restarts from scratch when I've been preparing for this video because it basically, it does buffer stuff in the background and it kind of pollutes these tests. And so I've just this minute decided that for the sake of pure science, I'm actually going to save this project. I'm going to shut Cubase down completely, reopen it, and we'll restart from here. Now, don't shoot the messenger. There's nothing I can do about this. Simply by closing Cubase down and reopening exactly the same project, I now have a new number. And since I'm going to do extra tests hanging off this number, I need to make a new copy of my one track data. Because now what I'm going to do is add an insert effect into this track. Up until now, empty tracks, who really cares? There isn't a processing overhead. We want to make Cubase start doing some work. So the first thing that I'm going to do is add an instance of IK Multimedia's Amplitube because I know it's pretty hefty. And as you can see, CPU is still in this pretty large range. So I'm not going to draw any conclusions there, but 1,210 is my new uh, memory size. In other words, 779 meg has come from this single instance of Amplitube. The next thing that I'm going to do is add an audio sample onto this track because I want Cubase to work in a, a, a real world environment actually processing data. So here's the sample loaded onto the track. You can see uh, the memory's gone up to 1217, so that represents the size of the sample itself, but nothing particularly concerning there. Now I'm going to duplicate this track to create a second instance of both the sample and Amplitube. Let's see what the numbers do. So our new memory number is 1735. And this is important because this is going to prove to be a very consistent story. The first time we added an instance of Amplitube, we had a 779 um, megabyte jump. Now, don't forget this second track has a sample as well. So 7 meg of this number um, is coming from the sample. So if our total is 1735, and our previous fully populated track was 1217, we need to subtract another seven meg representing the sample, uh, the sample size. That second instance of Amplitube has only occupied 510. You're gonna see this a lot. The first instance of a thing, whether it's an insert or a VST instrument, is gonna have a bigger footprint, certainly from the memory perspective, 
than each subsequent instance. Cubase has some sort of caching process in the background that if you create multiple copies of the same thing, they don't stack from the original number, they stack from this smaller number. The easiest way to do that is to duplicate this track another 18 times. Okay, here we have 20 instances of Amplitube. Every one of these tracks has an instance on there. You can see them all. Our CPU at rest is still, it's gone up. Uh, it's now between, let's say three and seven. The memory is pretty vast, 11506. So let's see the memory consumption of each one of those extra 19 tracks. Leave the original one alone, 19 tracks to play with. So I've got 11506 is the total value. Take away what it was when we only had a single track. Slightly higher than this initial instance, but you can see we're averaging out at around about 500 meg per individual instance. Now for the fun bit, because we'll press play and each one of these instances of Amplitube is going to start working. So no additional burden on memory. Once the thing is loaded, it's loaded. There's no extra burden. But the moment we press play and these instances start working, you can see that the CPU has absolutely leapt. So that's what an extra 20% over the 20 instances. Each individual instance is consuming there or thereabouts 1%, which is why when we were running only one of them or two of them, you're not going to be able to see those numbers because the, the, the overall flux between the minimum and maximum CPU was just too big. But now that we've got all of this data, you can quite clearly see it's working quite hard. You've also got this very, very small stress on the disk. That's basically each one of these samples being loaded in real time and placed in a buffer. In Studio Setup, we can determine how big that preload buffer is. If I make the disk preload larger, we should get some, we should get a minor change to these numbers, but it will be pretty trivial. Memory burden has just gone up a little bit more because it's having to load each one of these samples into a slightly bigger buffer and the disk activity is still fairly minimal. So this disk preload, you can, six seconds is an awfully large preload. It doesn't have that much of an impact, but you can actually see we've just gone back down again. Okay, summarize the conclusions so far. When you load an insert, uh, just it being sat on the track doesn't particularly stress the CPU. But the moment it starts working, when the project's playing, then it is working quite hard. And a single instance of Amplitube is occupying about 1% of my entire system um, CPU resources. Memory, it's all about loading. If it's there, it's using the memory. Uh, it doesn't matter whether or not the track's playing um, or in a stopped state, memory's consistent. So what happens when we freeze these tracks? Well, supposedly, that's supposed to re reduce all of our system stress. So our CPU was running at around 25% when it was having to work hard processing all of these tracks. I'm going to freeze all 20 tracks. And this is going to take quite some time, so I'll come back in a moment. And we're back in the room. I've updated my spreadsheet, so we've got a, an ongoing log of what's going on. The memory's just being a little bit fluxy. So I'm just letting it settle down, but it seems to have settled down at a slightly smaller number, which is a bit irritating because I've not actually seen that behavior before, but you know, science is science. So now we have 20 instances of a frozen Amplitube. Our CPU is 5.3%. Oh, it's just gone down again. Let's say three to five range, memory 10662 at rest. Let's find out what happens when we press play. It seemed like there was going to be a spike in CPU there, but there isn't. It's still cycling between 3 and 7%. The numbers are identical. So this is what freezing does. It reduces CPU burden. Freezing a track with inserts on them doesn't release the inserts from memory. I didn't know this until I ran this test. No CPU burden, but they are still in memory. Don't know why. Doesn't make much sense to me if a track's frozen. Why, uh, why the inserts can't be released from memory, but there are the facts, it, it, that's, that's what happens. Okay, so we've got some good test data there with some basic principles. What I'm gonna do is now run a second set of tests uh, with a VST instrument instead of an audio track. And I'm gonna see if we, have, if we see any similarity in the results over there. I'm gonna create myself a brand new project and we'll start completely from scratch again. See you shortly. 
Hello again, completely empty, empty instance of Cubase, just loaded up from scratch, got no tracks whatsoever. And I'm gonna start loading uh, some Archuria Modular V. At the moment, we've got 400, oh, 496 with a completely empty project. Now we add our first instance of Modular V. CPU doesn't really seem to have changed very much, I'll say two to six, but I'm not actually gonna conclude that that's got anything to do with uh, adding that extra instance, 590. So we're basically um, 95 meg from a single instance of the modular V. Now I'll duplicate that track, still two to six on the CPU. Memory's at 625. In other words, that second instance only occupies 30 meg. Once again, the initial hit has more heft to it than all subsequent instances. So now I'm gonna add 18 new instances of this instrument. And now we can see a definitive CPU bump. We're cycling between four and eight C, um, CPU percent. And our memory is now at 1286. So when we had a single instance, we were at 590. Which means those 19 instances between them are occupying 36 meg each. Now I've added MIDI tracks. There's a, a MIDI loop on every one of these uh, Moog modulars. I've not pressed play or anything yet, but you can see the memory's gone up to 1792. So that's the extra space occupied by each one of these MIDI loops, but the CPU's nice and low. Uh, I'll just make sure that my volume's in control because there's 20 tracks of Moog running here, but let's get them all running. So we're up at about 10%. 7 to 10%, so that's 20 instances of a pretty hefty modular synthesizer. I mean, this is not a trivial instrument, all running simultaneously. Pretty low CPU burden, but we definitely saw it jump. When we're idle, we're cycling between 4 and 8%. And the moment I press play, we're jumping up to maybe 9 or 10%. So there's definitely a CPU burden there, but it's fairly minimal. Memory, once again, hasn't been impacted by pressing play. Final couple of tests we're going to do is to do with freezing VST instruments. If I right click and say freeze, I've got two questions that I'm asked. Firstly, do I include inserts for the instrument tracks? There are currently no inserts here, so I'm just going to leave that blank. We're asked, do we want to unload instruments when frozen? Absolutely, yes please, let's get on with it. And we're back in the room. CPU burden's fallen back down to its um, pre-instance levels, two to six percent. Memory is this strange kind of hybrid number, 956, let's write it down. 956 is frozen. Just done some housekeeping on my spreadsheet. Two to five, nine, 900, 956. Goodness me, really, seriously. Uh, okay, so this is frozen. Let's see what happens when we press play. Very small spike, but certainly not a processing spike. We were running at 9 or 10%. Obviously, all of the VSTs have been unloaded. So this is literally just playing back the audio that's been rendered in the background. And again, our memory value doesn't care whether or not we're playing or stopped. That never changes at all. Disk access just leapt up there. Did you see that megs per second? That's because it's now reading all 20 of these audio files from disk. So that is changing when we press play. You can see it ranking up, ramping up as it has to load. However big that buffer was, you can see that preload buffer that we talked about earlier, that many seconds multiplied by 20 multiplied by your sampling rate is the amount of data that's having to be read into memory, but no fundamental system stress. The very final thing that I'm gonna do is to unfreeze all of these 20 tracks, add an instance of Amplitube to them and see whether or not an insert effect added to a VST track has any impact on memory. Back shortly. Okay, as you can see, unfrozen tracks, instance of Amplitube added to every one of them. Consistent with the results we saw earlier, huge leap in memory as each one of those instances of Amplitube is taking up five to 550 meg of memory. Pretty much no CPU burden. When we press play now though, all of those instances of Amplitube are gonna be working hard as that data, the, the audio data coming out of the modular is being sent through them. Let's see the CPU spike. And there we go. 
once again, 25% CPU. So the Moog isn't really having that much of an impact um, on the CPU. Amplitude is working much, much harder than that uh, Moog modular is and no jump in the memory. So final thing to find out is what happens when you freeze a VST instrument? Do we get this memory back or is it still retained? And we're gonna do that now. So I want to include inserts for instrument tracks. Yes, please do everything that you can to take this stuff off my system. Off you go. Hello again for the final time. 20 frozen tracks, all the instances, well, attempted to be shut down. I've asked uh, the inserts to be processed into the audio. And as you can see, it's had no impact on the memory. That's still the same. So they haven't been unloaded. Those insert effects haven't been unloaded. That's at, oops. 11991. CPU at rest is once again very idle, let's say three to six. And now I need to press play. I'm expecting to see very little change in the CPU because the inserts have been boiled into the VST instrument. That's what that question means. If I'd said no to that question, then the VST instrument would be shut down, but it would still be it would still be routed live through that instance of Amplitude, but we're not expecting to see that now. So this CPU number shouldn't really go up very much. And again, we see that small spike. That's just Cubase playing the data. You know, the, the CPU is fundamentally working a little bit harder because it's actually playing the track but it's not the, the, the VST um, plugins, the, the Amplitude or the Moog that's contributing to that. It's just the project itself. Now, while I was preparing for this video, I tried lots of different plugins and insert effects, even though the results are very rough um, and I wasn't really expecting to share this stuff with you. I'll just show some of the results. Different plugins have got different CPU rates. So the Moog and the ARP, I tried to find what I thought would be the heaviest CPU intensive VST instruments, but I couldn't really find a VST instrument that absolutely hammered the system in the same way that something like Amplitude or Bias FX can. They, they, they do work the system pretty hard. I was interested to see what the different metering um, plugins were like, whether one was more efficient than the other. Insight and TR5 are probably the two um, most commonly used meters I have very similar results. I actually put 64 tracks into Cubase. It was really working quite hard that day, but pretty minimal impact on the CPU. So anyway, you can, you can see that stuff, take a screenshot and have a look for yourself. But I think really interesting, very, very obvious, what kind of stresses are being placed on a system when you load a VST instrument into a track, an insert effect into a track, what impact freezing has on the process. Hope you enjoyed this. Please hit like if you did. I'll see you again. Thanks very much.